Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, welcome to episode 4 of The X-Files. Last time was Squeeze, and now, I haven't had any comments on the episode really, so I can't really judge what people think of it, but to me it's really one of the scariest episodes of the entire show, from my memory, which at the best of times isn't great. <laughs> but watching it again, as an adult, it is still scary, there is elements of it that are really mentally kind of terrifying and... I'd encourage anyone that's never watched X-Files to, even if the show doesn't interest you, there's a couple episodes throughout the series that I would recommend just anyone to watch as a, as a horror fan, and Squeeze is definitely one of them. This episode is called Conduit. I have no memory of this episode, like I couldn't tell you from the title anything about it. The name Conduit seems to suggest that potentially there's a person who could communicate with somebody or who acts as a conduit between two entities or two people. I'm not sure. So let's jump into episode four of X-Files to find out what it's all about. <laughs> Just from the campfire and the lake and some of the sounds, we're getting Friday the 13th vibes, which is, for those who don't know, is one of my favorite films of all time. Even though it's cheesy as hell, I love it. What's happening? It's not, it's not aliens again, is it? Already? Whatever it is, it's powerful enough to shake like a whole camper van. Caravan. Kevin. Ah! 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 Hot enough to make the metal in the caravan burn. Has she been abducted by aliens? I'm sensing it's an alien episode again. Ruby! So whatever it is came and took Ruby, but left Kevin. Hmm. Perhaps it has something to do with this. Take a look. Is that his file and his sister? Because you said in the first episode his sister was taken by aliens. Samantha Mulder, yeah. Oh. So maybe the whole event at the tent just kind of hit a nerve. I hit a nerve. Just Has kind of hit home. She disappeared 21 years ago. He was mm -hmm. 12 and she was 8. He claims that he was in the room when it happened. At least let me talk with him. And make a recommendation. Yeah, as much as he chases these cases it because of his past... He is quite logical in his thinking. Okay, Scully, so we disagree. It's not the first time and it won't be the last. <laughs> well, at least if we had Definitely a legitimate not. source, we could... This is the essence of science. But what makes this case any more credible than the hundred-year-old mother with the lizard baby? <laughs> because the lizard baby wasn't born anywhere near Lake Okaboji. Oka what? Four of the nine girls in the troop claim to have seen something. Five, if you include the den mother. The Air Force said it was a weather balloon caught in a wind shear. <laughs> there wasn't a weather balloon launched that day within 700 miles. It's still a reach, though, because a lot of these UFO pictures are faked. I'm not saying any of them are real, because I don't know, but... You know? It's the same Darlene Morris. There's one of the Girl Scouts. Well, I knew that if I screamed loud and long enough that someone would listen but i never expected the fbi oh. maybe his judgment is a little bit clouded because he's obviously still sad it's just like it was before summer of 1967 the girl scout troop how did you know about that your name's <laughs> on record it's called being good at your job UFO studies in evanston illinois really <laughs> yeah, finally, the National Weather Service made a similar sighting over the same area on the same day. I feel like for this show, I'm going to have to just buy into that, um, the, all the alien stuff is just real. It it's just far too much of a coincidence for her to have an alien counter at the same place years ago and for them to happen again. <laughs> the days we could pull off dungarees, eh? All right. Well, that's concerning. 
You making something? When kids are writing down binary code, and what's the chances of that binary code's actually gonna be real? And then it links to something, and he's a conduit! Episode title. It's coming from there. The TV? This is Poltergeist. They're here. But you didn't bother to check it out. We went out to the campsite, we didn't find anything. Let me tell you something. Darlene's little girl was no prom queen. I can't count the number of times I pulled her out of parked cars. I found her um, puking her guts out by the side so of the road. It was just a Because the cops, of obviously not UFO work. believers, they're now victim blaming and saying she's basically a slag. And so she Darlene put herself in a dangerous position. To get past that I hate victim blaming, it fucks me off. Truth. I'm not gonna waste my time. Get off my screen, you twat. But, because I listen to a lot of true crime stuff, do, uh, podcasts and things, victim blaming from sheriffs and police happens far too often. Well, that's concerning. Are she one of the Girl Scouts? It's like the night she disappeared. It was Greg. She was supposed to see him that night. Who's Greg? boyfriend, Greg Randall. We're supposed to meet up at the lake. Greg got Ruby pregnant. I don't know, whatever. She yeah. got herself pregnant. We're gonna leave town. At least that's what Ruby told me. So this is all heads in the... Greg? School? She actually just got kidnapped, maybe, because she was so. pregnant. Or left all town, but... I don't think so, because that wouldn't explain. The lights. The shaking of the caravan. Why the handle got red hot. Not again. We had to go to get attacked in the last episode. Where's Mulder? You could have knocked. Where did you get the document? This is a document? I told you it was something important. It's like a bunch of ones and zeros to me. I don't care if it's the NSA or the Vatican police. Mulder was in good shape back in the day. It's a defense satellite transmission. You're kidding. Just a fragment, but highly classified. We so the kid, came from somehow from a television, sure, I'll let you got given the binary code to a out. defense satellite That's transmission. How can an eight-year-old boy who can barely multiply be a threat to national security? People call me paranoid. <laughs> well, how did Kevin obtain top secret information? You can't honestly believe he's a threat. He's eight. Poor kid. Oh. Maybe they think she's giving him the code and she's done something. But I feel for the kid, I really do. Arseholes. Fucking arseholes. Just destroying his stuff. Oh, I'm angry. <laughs> well, that was the one that was there when the, um, she got abducted, right? I don't understand. When we downloaded the data, we found an amazing range of... Well, see for yourself. Da Vinci's universal man. A DNA double helix. This computer, though. Lots <laughs> more. But yeah, so the kid's getting just a lot of information. So maybe there's a force in another... Out there somewhere. That's... Kind of studying Earth and... Culture, arts and music, and con somehow communicating it to him. Agent Atsumi said it was a statistical aberration. Yeah, well, they're going to say that because they can't okay, explain it. Thank you. <laughs> is a link or a connection to whoever or whatever to Ruby. took Ruby that night. Have you noticed the tree line? Evidence Burnt. of extreme heat. That glass. Because that's an intense amount of heat. 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Massive amount of heat. Something was out here, Scully. Something hot enough to turn sand into glass to singe those trees and to blister the roof of that camper. Come on, Scully. Just start 
accepting that things are not a coincidence. Hello, doggo. Oh, yeah. That looks like a grave to me. But if the bodies are under the ground, that's going to reinforce the fact that they were just murdered. The victim's name was Greg Randall. So the boyfriend's been killed. Movie's boyfriend. Mm -mm. Movie had a lot of boyfriends. Before you put Once again, away. blaming her. Fuck off. We know that you're the one that's pregnant, not Ruby. Oh. And I don't know nothing, do you? We can prove it, Tessa. So they're basically all just sleeping this with each other. Easier. You knew they were meeting. So you sat there and you waited for them. So did she kill Greg? You were angry and you were jealous. Because she was jealous that he was getting with and you Ruby and you you whilst first. she's Is pregnant with his baby. No. You snuck up from behind him and you shot him in the back. Man. It would make sense. I didn't kill her! You didn't! She wasn't even there that night! So you were there. Dropped yourself in it, didn't you, Tessa? Me or don't come with me, but until they find a body, I'm not giving up on that. Yeah, job. even just like morally, you should be like, Well, there's a girl missing, we need to find where she is because she may or may not be murdered somewhere. So, Scully, come on, do your job properly. Oh my god, uh, it's her. Well, that's disturbing. So all the binary codes that he's got have led to a picture of Ruby. What does that mean? That's kind of spooky. What are you doing? Are you okay? It's here. I saw it. Where's Kevin? I couldn't keep up with him. Go ahead. So what? He's here, I know it. I would trust him because he's getting messages from I know how much somewhere. To see her. So this kid is writing complex. Binary code. Binary code. I would believe him. I'll get help. Okay. So why is she back? Mm. By any chance, was there an attendant reduction in the lymphocyte population or release of glucocorticoids? Um, <laughs> actually, both. How did you know that? There are symptoms of prolonged weightlessness. Shuttle astronauts have reported similar imbalances. Oh, interesting. How'd you explain that, Scully? <laughs> We're with the FBI. I'm a Special Agent Dana Scully, and this is Fox Mulder. Where were you, Ruby? Can you tell us? I'm not supposed to tell. They told me not to say. Who told you? Ruby, who told you? Sweetheart, you don't have to say anything. No. You're right. I want to know. <laughs> to be fair, if she was abducted and Alien said, don't say anything, you wouldn't say anything because I can imagine it's a horrifying experience to go through. I don't want her talking to you or anyone. She should be encouraged to tell you. You did before. Not to keep it inside. It's important that you let her. Important to who? You wanted to know where she I was a minute ago. The truth has caused me nothing but heartache. I but you finally got someone that listens to you and wants to take on what you've got to say and you're shutting them down. As far as I'm concerned, Piss off, darling. The last month on the back of a Harley Davidson. Is that what you're going to tell me? <sighs> For fuck's sake. I'm hungry. <laughs> this is the first episode of X-Files that's made me angry. She's calling out my name Aww. over and over again. Don't have more to be happy that you're uh, listening to those tapes, though. <laughs> I know I should be, but I'm not. Do you know why? Oh. Because of the voice. The voice? The voice in my head. What's it telling you? Not to be afraid. I was surprised how angry that episode got me. <laughs> I... Since I started this YouTube channel, there's not many times I've got angry at a TV show. There's a few things, if you watch my Supernatural reactions, where I've got kind of, like, like really frustrated. 
But that's like a main character. Normally side characters don't bother me. But this Darlene really frustrated me. She believed she saw UFOs as a child. She then believed that she had another UFO encounter, which her daughter was kidnapped. Or abducted, sorry. She shouted and screamed until someone heard her. Like she said, if I shout loud enough and long enough, someone will listen. Modern Scully came along. They helped her. They helped investigate. Tried to find out what, going, what went on. Ruby came back. Oh, along, amongst all this, her son was getting weird conduit binary codes given to him from the television, from somewhere. Weird. Confusing. They got arrested by the government. And Modern Scully tried to help. Do, uh, Ruby comes back. Darlene doesn't want to know anymore. She's just not interested. And that really frustrated me. Like, you've got two people here, well, at least one in Mulder, that are listening to your story and believe you, and you've got what you've wanted since day one, that people are listening to what you've got to say. And now you've got it, and you've got your daughter back, you're not interested. It just infuriated me. Maybe there's a hint that, because when Ruby came back, she said she was told not to speak anymore, presumably by aliens. Maybe that's a, one of the reasons Darlene doesn't want to talk about it, because she's scared. But again, like with Squeeze, it's kind of left it semi-up in the air. Did she get abducted, or was she kidnapped by someone human? And again, that's what I liked about X-Files. A lot of the stories were left open to interpretation. So in this one, in Conduit, let me know down in the comments below. Do you believe she was abducted by aliens? Or do you believe she was abducted by a person? Because the sheriff tried to basically slut shame her and say because she had a lot of boyfriends, she saw a lot of guys, she was bound to get kidnapped at some point, something bad was bound to happen to her. I mean, it's an option, it's a potential option, but with the glass in the sand and the top of the caravan being burned and the trees, I believe that she was abducted because all the different clues are too much of a coincidence to add up to anything else. There is a potential, and I would love to hear someone's theory on why they believe that she wasn't. Definitely. like That's what I love about my supernatural reactions the most, is that people write a lot of comments on their theories and their opinions, and I want that for X-Files as well. Like, if you're watching this, please leave me a comment so we can discuss like opinions, thoughts, theories, and, and talk about it. Because I'm intrigued to hear what other people think. It was odd that the whole storyline with Greg and Tessa was just a bit of a red herring. The whole thing... If you took the whole thing out of the episode, nothing different would have happened. Because if she was abducted by aliens or whoever, she still was abducted at the beginning. Kevin still got the conduit code codes given to him. And then she still got returned at the end. Tessa killing Greg had nothing to do with any of it. But then, if she was abducted by something that wasn't aliens, how does that explain what happened with the codes? Because it wasn't that he just randomly plucked a binary code out of thin air. He plucked out one that was a national security risk. Shakespeare's sonnet. Classical music. If she was abducted, that kind of explains. Like as Mulder said, if he was there next to the abduction, he was touched by something. He sort of had this kind of like telepathic link with something else. If you're under the impression that, he, that she wasn't abducted by aliens, please explain how... He did all those codes, and then all those codes that led to the picture of Ruby. Yeah, I'm unsure. But overall, the episode was quite interesting. It was a bit of a slower one. Like, Squeeze felt like I had a better pace to it, and kind of things were happening at a faster rate. And I think I was maybe more intrigued because I was scared about what was going on. Whereas in this one, it wasn't really creepy, other than the stuff with... Kevin and the television and the codes were just a little unnerving. The episode wasn't creepy as a whole, but overall it was okay. It was interesting. It had some good things that I want to discuss with people in the comments, but I'm intrigued to see if anyone actually comments because my X Files reactions so far aren't getting a lot of comments, so we'll see. But yeah, please leave a comment below if you enjoyed this reaction and let me know your thoughts on the episode as a whole. As always, my name is Scott. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and staying safe. There's some videos to my right that you may be interested in taking a look at if you like the look of the thumbnails and want to check out some more of my content. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed the reaction and like I say, leave some comments and we'll get discussing. Thank you for watching guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.